What is this? I've never seen it here before. I wonder if it's something to be concerned about. That's strange. Why is there no images set on darker skin? Maybe it isn't possible for me to develop skin cancer. Seems like it is possible. I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought because we couldn't burn, then we couldn't develop skin cancer. Let me search more about it. Oh, here are all the images for me. These images look very different from my first from my first search. It's strange that these images weren't included in my previous search. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer and is defined as an uncontrollable growth of cancer cells in the skin. A common misconception is a thought that people of color, specifically black people, can't burn in the sun or develop skin cancer, but that simply is not the case. A study completed by Culp and Lunsford conducted an analysis on melanoma cases from 2001 to 2015 U.S. Cancer Statistics Database. Melanoma is the most severe form of skin cancer and it occurs when cancer affects the melanocytes in the skin, which are the cells that produce melanin. In their study, they found that melanoma occurred in 28 out of 100,000 non-Hispanic white people compared to an occurrence rate of 1 per 100,000 in non-Hispanic black people. But here's the shocking part. Of these cases analyzed, non-Hispanic white people were diagnosed in the first stage of development 78% of the time, compared to Black people being diagnosed in this stage only 55% of the time. Conversely, when you look at the latest stage of diagnosis, only 5% of white people are diagnosed in this stage compared to 16% of Black people. You think that's shocking? The same study concluded with five-year survival rates and the differences are bleak. The survival rates for non-Hispanic white people versus non-Hispanic black people were 90.1% and 66.2% respectively. Survival rates indicate the prognosis of a particular disease normally calculated from the point of diagnosis. Typically, melanomas have high survival rates, which can be seen with the non-Hispanic white statistic. But if you're Black, this cuts your chances of survival by almost 25%. So if there's a huge difference in incidence rates, why are we seeing more Black people dying of this disease? Simply put, there are systemic factors that allow the perpetuation of racism to excel in medicine. Of high concern is the educational system aspiring physicians go through. Physicians learn how to diagnose skin lesions from dermatology textbooks and continue to refer to them even after training to aid in diagnosis. However, when you look at the textbooks dermatologists use, you'll find there is poor representation of skin diversity. Conducted by Eldelkun, Onyonkaba, and Lipoff, and another study by Lewis and Wilkes showed that on average, 11.5% of images shown in dermatology textbooks and only 4.5% of images shown in other medical teaching textbooks were representative of black skin. This is a huge problem because skin diseases, in addition to other conditions that present symptoms through the skin, can look very different between lighter and darker skin types. For example, one can clearly see here how different squamous cell carcinomas look. In lighter skin tones, more reddening is seen and borders are more defined. Whereas in darker skin tones, the redness indicator taught would not apply to the same degree. Generally speaking, dermatology is a very visual discipline. Therefore, it is especially concerning to see that there is a lack of skin diversity represented within books clinicians learn from. The next factor contributing to the disproportionate survival rates of melanoma is the lack of education surrounding melanin. Many people know that melanin is responsible for pigmentation and provides sun protection, but maybe this narrative has been carried away. Melanin is a natural pigment found in human skin that is produced by melanocytes. The main function of melanin is to protect against damage caused by UV ray lights. However, 
It has also been shown to regulate epidermal homeostasis and influence melanoma. Researcher Sarna et al. showed the presence of melanin can affect melanocyte transmigration in vitro. They propose that melanin can attenuate the movement of malignant melanocytes and decrease metatasis in vivo. In a sense, melanin is like a double-edged sword. It protects healthy melanocytes as discussed, but it also protects malignant melanocytes from therapies such as chemotherapy, which makes melanoma more difficult to treat in Black Indigenous people of color. A concern for BIPOC people when it comes to melanoma and other skin cancers is the difference in diagnosis stages. As mentioned, non-Hispanic white people are diagnosed at the localized stage 78% of the time compared to only 55% of the time for non-Hispanic Black folk. This is in addition to the higher metastatic rates Black people were diagnosed with as well. But why is this? One of the most practiced ways of evaluating skin lesions is the use of ABCD method. This method does not require any special high-tech equipment. It only requires the naked eye or an optional device called a dermatoscope. The ABCDE method is an acronym. A stands for asymmetry. The dermatologist looks at the lesion and bisects it into two perpendicular lines as shown here. Each section is then observed for any areas of asymmetry between the sections. And if there is, a point is recorded for each area of asymmetry. B stands for borders. The lesion is visually sliced into eight axes. Each axis is then observed for any abrupt border, such as shown here. Each abrupt border observed is a point added for this category. C stands for color. The dermatologist looks for different melanin and vessel concentrations that produce different colors within the lesion. These colors include white, brown, dark brown, black, blue, and red. For every additional color a lesion presents, a dermatologist adds a point for that. D stands for dermatoscopic structures. A dermatologist observes the lesions for structures such as dots, blobs, pigmented networks, and non-structured areas. For each of these present, a point is added. And finally, E stands for evolution. This step takes more time to assess as the dermatologist needs to observe the lesion over time to observe any changes in size, shape, or color. Any changes found are noted. The ABCD method is used to determine the S value or the total dermatoscopic score. If the score is less than 4.75, the dermatologist concludes that the lesion is benign. If the TDS is between 4.75 and 5.45, then suspicion arises and the area is monitored. If the value is greater than 5.45, then the lesion is considered malignant. The issue with this method is that it is very visual based, making it very prone to biases and misobservations. Many people with skin types four through six can have malignant lesions being misdiagnosed as benign due to human error. And since medical textbooks do not reflect different skin types in their images, there is no reliable backup for clinicians to reference either. It is clear throughout this video that there are huge areas of concern when it comes to medical racism. These images comparing other skin disorders on different skin types just confirms the narrative being written. There is clearly a lack of representation of black skin in medical textbooks, and this can lead to misdiagnosis and poor health outcomes for people of color. Hello, what seems to bring you in today? Hi, I have this new mole on my hand and I'm concerned it might be cancer. Oh, well, let's take a look. Well, everything seems to be in order, but I'll refer you to the dermatologist just in case. Thank you. When I was doing some research on the topic, I found some very concerning stats, so I became a little concerned. That's okay. I can discuss some prevention methods with you that will help ease your mind. That'd be fun. First and foremost, it's really important to reduce your exposure to UV light rays. So this can involve avoiding the sun when it's highest in the sky between the times of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. In addition, it's really important to always wear sunscreen with a sun protection factor of at least 20. This way, your skin is protected against the UV light rays even if the sun is not out. 
So, secondly, it's important to reduce photocarcinogenesis interactions within the body. So photocarcinogenesis is just how light interacts with our bodies and causes mutations on a cellular level. If you include foods that are high in antioxidants such as pomegranates or avocados into your diet, this can reduce the effects of these interactions. Lastly, it's very important to create a body map. Body maps can be a full-size drawing of your body or it can be something as simple as a journal. What you're going to do is take a catalog of every skin lesion or mole that you have on your body and you're going to document it. This way you have solid proof and evidence to provide to your physician about your skin lesions and any growths that may be new or growing. My final piece of advice is to be unapologetic in your demands for care. You are the only person in your body, so you're the only person who knows when something's wrong, so make sure to bring it to your physician. Be specific in your needs and make sure to let them know when you want a referral. This way, if any physician in the future denies your request, you can ask them to document this in your file. If this ever happens, say something like this. Hi, I realize that you don't want to provide me with this referral, but could you please document why you're refusing this and please indicate it in my file. And I'd also like a copy of my file before I leave today. Thank you. This way, the physician can think and ask themselves if they are denying your request for a referral based on their own biases or miseducation, or if it's a legitimate denial request. In addition, even if you feel like it is an, a wrong um, decision, you can bring this to another physician and have them give you a second referral because it is your right to request referrals when needed. Thank you so much for sharing all those prevention strategies. I'm going to tweet and share the message of all your strategies. It's important for my community to receive and digest this information because this disease is killing us all prematurely.